So recently, I have been binging some movies from my childhood that I used to watch all the time as a kid. Some of them still hold up and are really fun to watch, while others turn out to be shit and I was blinded by nostalgia. Hooray. But one movie that really caught my attention with how well it's held up and how amazing it is, is a movie that isn't even that old. The movie in question was released back in 2016, which was... six years ago. Fucking hell, I'm getting old. And it's a movie from the country where I was born and raised, Ireland. This is good to you, Junkie Joe Giants. And if you've read the title of this video and seen a thumbnail, you know that I'm talking about the Irish comedy film, The Young Offenders. Now you're probably wondering, why do I love this film so much? At first glance, it looks like your average buddy road trip adventure movie, with lots of comedic elements sprinkled in. Well, underneath the first impression is a movie that has so much heart and emotion. While it is primarily a comedy, it tackles lots of heavy themes and topics in a very mature way. But before I dive deep into the themes of the movie, let me talk about the plot first. The film takes place in the summer of 2007, and is about two best friends named Connor McSweeney and Jack O'Keefe, played by Alex Murphy and Chris Wally. They both live in County Cork, Ireland, which isn't the best county. We all know that Dublin is like, the best county, and no one can change my mind on that. Anyway, in the opening, we get introduced to the main boys and their friendship. They bounce off each other so well, and they have such a good dynamic. But we'll get more into their relationship later. We get shown their family lives and how they live. Connor lives with his single man Maraid, played by Hilary Rose. His father died in a pretty comical way, to be honest. And he works at the fish market part time with her. Jock is seen living with his dad, who is a struggling alcoholic, and is seen to steal money from Jack and often abuses him. Jock copes with his shitty family life by stealing bikes and selling them for money. He goes under the alias Fake Billy. He framed one of the characters named Billy Murphy for stealing bikes. And honestly, Billy Murphy is one of my favorite characters in the movie. He is so fucked up and insane that I just love him. This led to a guard named Sergeant Tony Healy to chase after him and try to catch Jock posing as Fake Billy. Right away, we see just how upsetting their home lives are, with both of them having one parent families who don't treat them well. Later on, Jack hears on the news that a bale of cocaine that was worth at least 7 million euros washed up in the west of Cork, near an area called Three Castle Haid, and he has an idea to cycle down there with Connor and steal one of the bags so they can sell it and move out of their households. The rest of the movie follows them cycling down to Three Castle Haid to steal a bale of cocaine while running into many different characters and getting into weird situations. Firstly, I just want to gush about the filmmaking and directing here. The film was written and directed by Peter Foote. Now, this was his first ever feature film. Previously, he directed short films and sketches for the RTE. And for his first film, he knocked it out of the park. It's estimated that the budget of this film was around 50,000 euros, which is just insane. Watching this film, you wouldn't be able to tell how much the budget was. The cinematography is amazing, and you can't really see them cutting any corners. They managed to work with what they had, yet still produce something that looks really high quality. For example, the bike chase in the beginning of the film is really fun and entertaining to watch, and the acting from the characters is also very well done. The main characters are played brilliantly by their respected actors, and have such great chemistry. You can tell that they are really close friends, and have known each other for years. Only nitpick is that they are supposed to be 15 years old, which I don't buy. The actors were in their early 20s, and it just doesn't seem believable. Hell, I'm 18, yet they look older than me, like what the hell? But that's a minor negative I have, and it doesn't affect my viewing of the film. What really sells this movie for me isn't the adventure, but rather the character relationships. In the movie, we see both of their home lives and how messed up it is for each of them. Connor and his mom don't really get along, and Maraid isn't really a great parent and can often say some pretty nasty stuff towards Connor. But they don't paint her as a terrible person. She is genuinely trying to be a good parent and can sometimes say something that she doesn't really mean. We see her struggling throughout the film to get along with Connor, and she just wants to be a good mom. A great scene that shows this is where Connor returns home from their adventure, and him and his mom just talk to each other about how they feel. And it's really heartwarming. We see that Maraid does genuinely care for Connor and wants to be a good mom. And Connor admits that she isn't the worst mom ever. And if I'm being brutally honest. You're not the shittiest mom in town, so that's the only compliment you're getting at this point in time. I'll take that, thank you. Well, that's all you're getting. So. You're not retarded most of the time. 
It's moments like this that really make the film feel real to me, and even relatable. On Jock's side, his mom died a year before the events of the film, and his dad is... well, a terrible person. He barely speaks throughout the film, and is seen drinking his problems away. But the acting from his dad is great, and you can see how broken he is. It doesn't excuse what he's doing to Jack, obviously. If anything, he is straight up abusive and cruel. It shows how alcohol can ruin someone, and turn them into a monster. Thankfully, Jock is taken away from his dad, and ends up living with Connor and his mom, which is a pretty good conclusion to the film. There are of course other characters in the film, like the previously mentioned Sergeant Tony Healy. He is obsessed with Fake Billy and is determined to arrest him. He follows the boys on their journey, not knowing that Jock is Fake Billy. He's a pretty entertaining character, and seeing the lengths he'll go through to catch Fake Billy is really funny. Then we have the two main antagonists of this film. We first get introduced to Billy Murphy around the beginning. He's the guy who Jock is impersonating when he steals bikes. In the opening, the guards raid Billy Murphy's house since they believe that he's the one stealing all the bikes, but instead he gets arrested for possession of drugs. He he thinks that Connor is fake Billy due to some weird circumstances, which causes him to go crazy and wants to kill Connor. Although he was always crazy throughout the film, so nothing's new here. Like I said earlier, Billy is easily one of my favorite characters, purely because of how insane he is. The actor gives him so much aggression and anger, sort of like an Irish Trevor Phillips from GTA. I need to meditate, or masturbate, or both. The only thing that sucks is he barely has any screen time in the film. He only shows up around the beginning and end of the film, but I loved every single minute of him on screen. He was amazing. Then there's the crippled drug dealer. Let me explain. When Connor and Jack arrive to the location, all of the cocaine is gone, except for one bale, which is in possession of a crippled drug dealer. Connor and Jack steal the last bale of cocaine from him, causing him to hunt them down and hold everyone hostage with a nail gun at Connor's gaff. He ain't really intimidating like Billy Murphy, but he is still really fun to watch, especially with his actor and how great he bounces off the other characters. Sorry, Sorry for it's grand. Do I put too much milk in? No, it's grand. Will I make another one? No, it's, leave it. Sorry. In terms of other characters, there's also this old man character that the boys ran into while escaping Tony. He doesn't have much screen time, but he left a big impact on me. He brings both Connor and Jack in and gives them dinner, but he thinks that they are someone else. It's clear that he is not all there in the head, and something happened that turned him into a mess. What makes it even more mysterious is that we're barely told what's going on. They don't tell us what happened to him, instead they gave us vague hints and let us put the pieces together. The scene with him is rather short, but it greatly affects the plot, as it's another example of a character using alcohol to solve their problems. I'm glad they didn't directly tell us what his problem was and kept it a mystery. But enough with all the emotional stuff. This is a comedy movie and it's goddamn hilarious. While the film does balance many serious issues like abuse and alcohol issues, this movie has some great humor. They mainly use dark humor throughout the film and it fits naturally with the tone. It doesn't feel forced or unnecessary. Loads of the jokes landed perfectly and left me dying of laughter. A great example of the humor in the film is the scene where the drug dealer is holding everyone hostage. It's such an intense moment, yet the way it's written and acted is hilarious. My favorite part was where Connor got a nail to the balls. <laughs> Jesus, sorry. Are you alright? <laughs> that was really funny. But the main aspect of the film is the journey that Connor and Jack go on. The adventure part of this film is really entertaining. Seeing all the situations they get into and all the weird characters they run into is amazing. But there is one issue that sort of ruins the adventure aspect for me, and that is the dreaded third act breakup. While they're cycling away, Connor accidentally spills all the cocaine, which angers Jack. He punches Connor and they separate. Now, I hate third act breakup in movies. It's so predictable and just takes me out of the experience. But here, they handle it better than usual. Right after they had their fight, Connor doesn't shit talk Jack to his mom. If anything, he speaks rather highly of him, and the conflict is resolved rather quickly in a natural way. So it isn't that bad, but I would have rather they kept the third act break about. Also, one more aspect of the film I want to talk about is the music. The music here is straight up fire. Most of the soundtrack consists of licensed music, but every song that has been chosen for the soundtrack fits perfectly, especially with songs like Paper Planes in the beginning and Where's We Jump at in the end. I can play the soundtrack, of course, thanks to YouTube being. YouTube, but go listen to the soundtrack yourself, it's great. In conclusion, I love this movie. Everything from the acting, directing, story, themes is so well done. It all culminates together to create such an enjoyable movie. It's the kind of film I can watch over and over again and never get tired of. I sure hope nothing ruined this amazing film, like a sequel or a spin-off series. Oh. Yeah. I forgot. Fuck! So, in 2018, there was a TV series based on the film. 
I don't like it. I won't get into detail why I don't like this series, since I plan to make a video of my issues with the show, but I found it really hard to watch with bad jokes and annoying side characters. It's not terrible, and there are some redeeming qualities, but compared to the movie, it's really bad. Again, that's just my opinion, since a lot of people seem to love this series. So, if you want to watch it, go ahead, I guess. I ain't stopping you. But in my opinion, it's not very good. But the movie is amazing, and I cannot recommend it. It enough. It's on Netflix, so go watch it. If you live in America, I would suggest watching this film with subtitles, since it can be hard to understand what these weird cork creatures are saying. But besides that, it's a great watch. Go check it out. Now I'm gonna hop on my bike and cycle all the way to Cork. Since this movie has sort of inspired me to go cycling around Ireland, I'll see you all later. Oh my god!